What's up, NASCAR Authentics fans? David Land here, and we're here for another unboxing and review of the first wave of 2015 NASCAR Authentics. I'm really excited. We had a really long dry spell at the end of 2014. We were supposed to get a wave uh, featuring at least the AAA 22 of Joey Logano. That never showed up in stores. So this is the first wave we've gotten since, I think, October. And boy, it's nice to be back. Uh, it's been kind of hard to create YouTube content uh, recently, so I apologize for that. But I've been active on other social media sites. So if you want, if you'd like to, uh, be sure to give me a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and new for 2015, I've got an Instagram. Uh, that's at David Land on YouTube, uh, and it's slash David Land on YouTube for Facebook, and at DLand91 for Twitter. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of racing stuff during the season, and of course, I do all the NASCAR Authentics, and I'm going to really try hard this year to do all the haulers as well. That was my most popular video of last year. You guys responded so well to it, so I'll try to do those as well. Also like the video and leave a comment if you uh, like uh, what you see or if you don't like what you see let me know so I can change it for next year. Alright or next year for next video well it seems like we're at the rate we're releasing Spin Masters it'll be one video a year but we'll get into that. Uh, six cars for this year down from seven uh, that's uh, we'll talk about that and uh, so without further any further ado Let's unbox these cars and take a look at them. One other thing before we get started, you might have noticed this in the background. This is now the diecast reviewing set. I built a set. Uh, if you couldn't tell, hopefully my artiste uh, NIST was at least able to convey this is a pit lane, this is a racetrack, this is a start-finish line. Just something so I can set up die casts after I've reviewed them, and uh, hopefully it'll give a little bit more um, environment to the reviews, and it won't just be boxes strewn across a white or a brown background. You know, just trying to change things up, make things more interesting as we move into 2015. Speaking of 2015, the first Spin Master 2015 car I'm going to review is of Kurt Busch, the hard driver segment, Haas CNC Chevy for Stuart Haas Racing. New paint scheme, a lot more red on it, the flat black is gone, and we'll see whether I like this one better, or if I don't like it better than the 2014 version. Alright, let's crack it open. Start the die cast reviews for 2015, and we're off. As we crack this car open, and can you tell I'm out of practice? Alrighty. Boop. Don't worry, guys. I'll get I'll get in the swing of things. And here we go. We're gonna go right off with the box. The rendering of the car. Top, sides, bottom, all the same pretty much. They did change this. I think I mentioned that in another review from the first couple waves. And they've kept this uh, bigger window in the back. Hard driver segment, of course, looks good with the hard driver segment uh, color there because, of course, this is a red car this year. And uh, I actually, uh, I'm doing this one first because I actually kind of half already reviewed this one. I helped Robbie Noonan. He, for some reason, decided it would be a good idea to buy one off of eBay for $12 when they are $5.99 in the stores. And I should have mentioned earlier that I found these at Walmart. <laughs> I totally forgot, but uh, $4.99 in the stores, excuse me. Uh, yeah, I found these at Walmart. So uh, for those of you who are going to ask, Walmart, that's where I'm finding them. So you can see, and it's a. Uh, I'm liking the finish this year. Definitely, uh, definitely feels nice. I love the feel uh, of nice new die casts. On the side here, you can see that this is now an H for Haas CNC. Now we've got a red hood. Still have not uh, gone for the full on. Um, actual Chevy logos. We've still got the outlines. That's technically incorrect, but I'm willing to let it slide because I almost like those logos better. As we can see, America's Machine Tool. Now, something I'm noticing a little bit on the Spin Masters, it's not so bad on this one. 
but the the decals are starting to slope down a little bit on the rear quarter panel um, I'm not sure why that might be but who knows this car reminds me a lot of the old uh, Mike Bliss cars uh, and whoever else drove for Haas before it was Stuart Haas Racing. Let's take a look at the 2014 car side by side with it. Of course we've got the flat black versus the bright red. So there's quite a bit of difference. You know I'm, yeah you know what, I'm starting to think that this uh, Kurt Busch car for 2015 is starting to grow on me. Um, I really was a big fan of the flat black car, but you know what, the more I look at it, the more I'm kind of glad it changed. So there you go, the different, a little bit different number on the top, a little bit less uh, red outline versus this year's. But it's a good start to the year, I would say. I'm happy with this car. And uh, let's put him over in the pit lane. Let's put him there and we'll go on to the next car. All right, as I said before, there are six cars in the wave. There are five 2015 versions of cars, and there's one 2014 version from the race winner's segment, the Go Bowling 400, Dale Jr., Michael Baker, National Guard, uh, Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports. Now, uh, I did a lot of research, which is not something I normally do for these videos. Surprise, surprise, getting so many things wrong, like this uh, this company, whatever this is. That is not Dow Jones, by the way. Um, so to prevent me from making another faux pas like that, I was looking for what Michael Baker International actually is. And I found absolutely nothing definitive. So I can only assume that it's a Ponzi scheme uh, put together by the Mafia. And so the Mafia uh, got Dale Jr. to win the Go Bowling 400 because they were going to, they threatened to break Brian Francis' legs if he didn't comply. They also uh, mentioned that group qualifying was a really good idea and that if he didn't want to be swimming with the fishes, they should probably do that for Daytona. Uh, actually, if you do know what Michael Baker International is, please let me know in the comments uh, so that uh, everybody knows because I could not find anything definitive of what they do. So let's open up this car. Oh yeah, and another mistake I made, kind of related to this car, but not really. I confused it with this car. The Kelly Blue Book car. I think I even called this car in the review the Pocono winner. This was not the Pocono winner. This was. All right. <laughs> so let's. A lot of mistakes. A lot of, a lot of craziness already with this car. Uh, this will also be the last time you can get a Dale Jr. Spin Master. Maybe. Well, I may be speaking too soon on that. The last time you can get a Dale Jr. Spin Master with this logo on it, the National Guard. National Guard for 2015, no longer in racing, no longer in IndyCar, no longer with uh, Dale Jr., and uh, yeah, because of government spending cuts. Hashtag, no, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> so there you go. The Michael Baker scheme, nice looking scheme, a little bit plain, but here we go. Michael Baker International. As you can see, there is Kelly Blue Book on it, so I was not mistaken. I was a little bit mistaken. What is this on the back here? I can barely read that. I don't know what that logo is. And as you can see, we're going on to the top. Earnhardt Jr. Winning at Pocono in this car. Was that a 400 mile race or a 500 mile? Yeah, 400 because they uh, NASCAR got a lot of fan complaints about Pocono being too long and too boring. So they knocked the uh, the distance down 100 miles to try to combat that. So there you go, the Michael Baker car. And yet another Dale Jr. I'm not sure if this is a is if this is a good move to flood the market with Dale Jr. cars, but who knows. We'll see how that turns out. I mean, if people really like the Michael Baker car, uh, I'm not really sure if people are really interested very heavily in this car, but who knows. Um, hopefully, well, I know that they will be interested in the next Dale Jr. car I show you, but this one, not sure. So, But it's a race winner's car, so I'm sure a lot of people will enjoy that about this car. And I think it's pretty nice looking. A uh, little bit understated, 
Maybe could use a little bit more blue up top here. But aside from that, I think it looks pretty nice. So hopefully my mafia joke does not end uh, with me swimming with the fishes. And uh, we'll move on to the next car as we put Dale Jr. in his pit stall just ahead of Kurt Busch. So we move on to the next car. And here we go. The number two Brad Keselowski Great Racers segment. Team Penske Ford, the Blue Deuce, which is surprisingly not very blue. Is a Blue Deuce really a Blue Deuce if the car is white? These are the thing. These are the questions that keep me up at night, folks. As you can see on the back, lots of legal stuff that you don't want to read. No one wants to read, but they have to put it on there so they don't get sued. NASCAR hologram. Let's pop this car open and take a look at it. Of course, Brad Keselowski did not make many fans last year. A lot of people were angry at Brad, throwing things at Brad, punching Brad in the face, knocking him over behind his hauler, all sorts of fun, extracurricular, upside down, activities. As you can see, the box, Team Penske logo, blue deuce on a white deuce, Something like that. Lots of deuces. Great racer segment. Orange coloring for that. And let's take a look at the car. Brad Keselowski, the blue, white deuce. Actually, why didn't they put white? Why don't they call this? Do they call it still? See, here's the question I have. Is it still the blue deuce if it's white? Or do people call it the white deuce now? I don't know. Because, of course, you can't put Miller Lite on the die cast. We've mentioned this before unless you guys want spin masters to start doing bases like like uh, Lionel does but I don't think you want that well I like this car quite a bit I do like the um, the white Miller light scheme even if it doesn't really have any Miller light uh, logos on it like it quite a bit but there is something I should point out that a lot of people have already pointed out <sighs> what what is what is the color of these wheels? Those uh, those are silver wheels. Now on the rendering here, they're white. And I think on the real car, they're white as well. So the question uh, comes up, did they have any white wheels? <laughs> and I can answer that question. Spin Master can produce white wheels. In fact, we saw them on the last Brad Keselowski car produced in 2014. So, a strange and rare error from Spin Masters. And I should, and by error, I mean something fairly obvious, kind of overlooked. I mean, it looks nice, don't get me wrong. Uh, I, I'm a pretty big fan of this paint scheme in this car, and I can overlook that, but some people might not be able to. So, just a word of warning, the white deuce has got silver wheels and it needs white wheels. At least, I believe, that is accurate, but still, a nice looking car. I like it quite a bit, actually, like I've said a few times already. It's the kind of car, um, I like white cars, I don't know why. Uh, race cars always look nice with that whited out look, the white body with a little bit of maybe blue or red accent, and then the white wheels, I like that quite a bit. So, good job on Penske, uh, pretty good job for Spin Master. Kind of wish they would have used the 2014 and 2013 wheels, but eh, whatever. It's a $5 car. If you've got a problem with quality control on that, take a look at Lionel. So, we'll be back with the next car in the wave. Alright, this, uh, I do believe, will be the rarest car of this particular wave. The From the Future Stars segment, Trevor Bain, car number 6, Roush Fenway Racing, Advocare Ford Fusion. And the reason I say it will be rare is not necessarily because Trevor Bain is this overly popular driver, which he is not, at least in my opinion. Uh, it's because it seemed like when I was going through the uh, the little end cap box, uh, I had a hard time finding these. Uh, there was like, I mean, it was a full box. It was a full end cap. Nobody had touched it yet. I was the first one to get there, but there were only three of Trevor Bain and like five of every other car. So either somebody had bought two Trevor Baines or this car is short packed. So this uh, will be the hard one to find. And actually, strangely enough, this is the third 
third. Uh, Trevor Bain we've gotten. Of course, we've already gotten the Nationwide, now Xfinity Series, uh, Advocare car. Very similar in paint scheme to this uh, Fusion for the NASCAR Cup Series. But we've also gotten Trevor with the 21 car, the Wood Brothers car, that finally got released after being teased for about uh, a year and a half. Uh, so that was fun. I'm glad we have this car, and this still doubles as a Ryan. Oh God, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss it because I I said Ryan Truex or Ryan Blaney. I th think it's Ryan Blaney that's driving this, not Ryan Truex. I think I got that horribly wrong last time, and a lot of people yelled at me in the comments. So, future star segment Trevor Bain, the only future star segment car in this wave, and I'm glad to see car number six return to the Roush team hopefully is valvoline still a sponsor on them doesn't appear to be darn i was gonna say i was hoping that maybe we can get a valvoline six car back in the day when mark martin drove the valvoline cars they were some of the best looking nascars stock cars race cars whatever you want to call them of their day so Let's take this car out of its box, and this will be actually, I believe, Trevor Bain's first full season in NASCAR Sprint Cup competition. So is he technically a rookie? There's no rookie stripes on there, so uh, I guess he's technically not a rookie. Of course, he already has a win in the Daytona 500 in 2011, but that was quite a while ago. Uh, four years. Four years since we've had a Trevor Bain win, but of course he was driving for the Wood Brothers, which uh, I'm sure they would tell you straight up the bat that they don't have the budget of the Rouches or the Hendricks or the Stewarts or, you know, of the NASCAR or the Penske's for uh, crying out loud. Um, they don't have those budgets, so they just don't aren't able to compete. So hopefully we'll be seeing this Advocare car up at the front in 2015. Kind of nice American flag back there. You don't see that a whole lot, just a American flag there. It's probably because they didn't have a sponsor to put there, but you know, it looks nice. We build champions. Hmm. What does Advocare do? I believe they're a, hold on, I, th I know this. I think they're a tool thing. Or maybe a car care um, place. Something like that. I think it said it on one of the die casts. But uh, here's the Mustang versus the Fusion, just f so you guys uh, know. And you know what would be really cool? Hopefully we get one. Uh, would be a hauler. So you could stick the Nationwide car in there, and then you stick the Sprint Cup car in there. And have a whole Trevor Bain team. Actually, that would be a good multi-pack, actually, now that I think about it. Nice looking car. Does remind me quite a bit of the Mark Martin cars of old, probably just because of the number six, but uh, I like it quite a bit. Looks nice, and it'll be interesting to see how Trevor Bain does in the 2015 Sprint Cup season. Let's get him on pit lane, and we will move on to the next car. One of my fa the the next two cars in the wave. I'm very excited for. They're two of my very favorite uh, pace games already this year. So let's check them out. All right, the very exciting sponsor change for Dale Earnhardt Jr., the Great Racers segment, car number 88, Nationwide Chevrolet SS from Hendrick Racing. Oh, boy, this is exciting. Brand new car, brand new, uh, I'm not going to say team because that's not right, but uh, brand new uh, beginning for Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Hendrick Motorsports. That National Guard that was there, it's gone. So this is going to be the main Dale Jr. scheme for this year. As you can see, it still says National Guard on his uh, on his uh, little uh, fire suit there. I was trying to think of what the, the, I guess, collar would be the correct word. That must have been when he ran Nationwide last year. But uh, yeah, it's a great looking scheme. And I can't wait to take it out of its box, so let's let's get going. Boop. And that's a different way of opening it, but whatever, got the job done. Move the box out of the way, and take a look at that box. Boop. Number 88 is in gray, just like on the Michael Baker car, nationwide. Uh, dark blue, light blue, white. I like that quite a bit. I like that the uh, kind of rainbow look 
that it has. Very nice. Back of the box, there's the side. And the box is actually, the quality of the box is actually pretty good this year. Uh, it's looking really nice. They're uh, staying together very well, and it almost feels like they're using a different material. So here we go. The Dale Jr. Nationwide car. The car, the sponsorship that Nationwide determined was more valuable than sponsoring an entire NASCAR series. Consider that when you uh, think when you ask the question, or if you do ask the question, of how popular and how much pull Dale Earnhardt Jr. has in not only the NASCAR community but the marketing and advertising community. And, uh, of course, he was the Daytona 500 winner of last year. Was not able to make a very successful championship run out of that, but uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. certainly last year looked uh, back to his mid-2000s form when he was driving the Budweiser car for his uh, late father. As you can see, uh, a little bit of, uh, of the problem I described earlier with the decals or the stickers coming down a little bit on the quarter panel but on this side it seems to be okay so I'm just confused about that why that's happening or why that isn't happening but uh, who knows but I like this I like this quite a bit I'm very happy to have it I'm glad they got it out early um, last year they kinda I won't say dropped the ball but that the first the National Guard car that I have somewhere around here that won the Daytona 500. This one did not come out for quite a while, and we were actually juniorless for a while in terms of the NASCAR Authentics line. We hadn't had one since 2003, and now suddenly we're flooded with Dale Juniors again. So that's interesting to see. May, do we have 202 Daytona 500 winners next to each other, guys? Let me know. Um, we'll find that out soon enough, but uh, I like this quite a bit. Very happy that uh, Dale Jr. has got in a nice looking ride and uh, obviously nationwide stepping up to the plate big time. So uh, very happy with this one. Like it quite a bit. Kelly Blue Book stays on as does Diet Mountain Dew. It's just the National Guard that's gone. So you'll be seeing Dale Jr. a lot in this card in 2015. And uh, for you junior fans, and I like the fact that it's a little bit sparkly. I know I've uh, kind of poo-pooed sparkliness in one of Robbie Noonan's reviews, but uh, that looks nice on this car. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, will, will we be seeing this much in victory lane in 2015? Who knows? I'm sure you junior fans would love to see this car in victory lane a lot in 2015. So, we'll move on to the last car of the wave, and perhaps my favorite one. Let's take a look at it. Here's a guy who did, who needs a very good 2015. He had a terrible 2014 for reasons I don't need to go into because you probably already know. Hard driver segment, car number 14, Tony Stewart, the Tracker Boats, um, Bass Pro Shops, Mobile One, Chevy SS for, of course, Stewart Haas Racing. I think this is my favorite car of 2015 so far from Spinmaster. Uh, I'm excited. I like this paint scheme quite a bit. I like the Mobile One. I don't think we've had a Mobile One Stewart car since 2012 when he won the championship. I think there was a special championship edition of this car. Of course, on the COT mold. This is, of course, on the Gen 6 mold. We haven't had a Tony Stewart since the Code 3 Associates car. I believe this was a race winner segment car. I can't remember if that's true or false. It's probably false, and I'm going to look like a gigantic idiot. But, uh, all right, let's pop this one open. This is probably my favorite of the whole lot, the whole wave, the whole enchilada, whatever you want to call it. And we'll pop this open because... I like exploding dinosaurs, and therefore... Oh, oh, no. No. And we have oh. a yellow flag, yellow flag. We had a background fall down. You can't even see that, so I'm going to keep going. <laughs> that's the first time that's happened, and I ha I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet. This is the first time that's happened. The background has fallen over. Uh, those are stacked so precariously in every video. 
<laughs> and I'm telling you this now because it might happen again. Uh, what was I talking about? Exploding dinosaurs right as the background exploded. I like oil company schemes. They always look very good. Uh, hard driver segment there. I always think they look just divine. I'm a big fan of the shell uh, paint schemes that Penske runs. I'm a big fan of, uh, oh, who else runs an oil company? these days. Oh, well, Valvoline. I was talking about Valvoline earlier. So, Mobile One looks great. I love that logo. It always looks good on a race car. I love this blue stripe coming across behind the 14. Tractor bait, boats, Bass Pro Shops, and boy, oh boy, we are having all sorts of trouble here on the rear quarter panel on both sides of the car. A uh, little bit uneven logos. Um, they just kind of seem to be a little bit wobbly in terms of their placement. I'm not sure what's going on there. Rush Truck Centers and Haas are not doing too, not too and too well. But uh, on a whole, I like this car quite a bit. And maybe I should have been more careful, seeing as I had the pick of the litter, pretty much. I could have picked a, I could have looked a little harder for a better. Um, uh, decal applied Tony Stewart car, but I like this quite a bit. Uh, slight error uh, aside, I mean, this looks great. Like I said, it's my, probably my favorite of this 2014 wave. It's a tiny bit busy, I would say, um, but the problem with, with NASCAR these days is the budgets are so high that they need to sell a lot of sponsorship, and a lot of times you sell the hood and you sell the side of the car, and you sell the rear of the car to Mobile One, and then you sell this part to Tracker Boats, and the yeah, and Bass Pro Shops. So it ends up creating these kind of like hybrid schemes where you would have a, a Bass Pro Shop scheme that would be black and probably orange, or you'd have a Mobile One scheme that would be red, white, and blue. But since the budgets are so high, can't really do that. So you get schemes that look like this. You know, that's just kind of the way the world works. So in terms of, or at least these days, um, in terms of schemes like that, I think this does it really well. And I'm really excited about this paint scheme. And I'm wishing Tony all the best of luck this year because uh, hopefully he can bounce back, get a few race wins under his belt. And he seems hungry. Uh, in the Sprint Unlimited, he was flying through the field quite a bit, very fast. And uh, maybe we'll see him in Victory Circle for the Daytona 500 or some other big race this year. So that's the 2015 wave. Wave 1, I should say. And uh, we'll uh, rejoin in a different little bit location. A little bit. Something like that. I'm going to quit using filler words. Yay! So, 2015 Wave 1. What would you guys think of it? What's your favorite car? Did you like this wave? Are you picking these up? Do you think there's too many juniors? I asked this on the last wave of last year and the first wave of this year. We're getting two juniors per wave. And I'm worried that, that we're going to have junior-itis at the, uh, at the, um, in the aisle, you know? Um, I'm worried, but uh, hopefully my worries will be... Uh, unfulfilled. Um, I really like the Tony Stewart car, like I said before. I'm really a big fan of the Nationwide car. Um, I'm excited for this year. Hopefully we get a lot of really cool, interesting die casts. We didn't get a NASCAR Legends this year. Uh, this uh, wave. Hopefully we'll get some later down the line. I'm still hoping for that Tide Ride Spin Master. Don't let me down. Also, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe. I do these. Uh, I do every wave of the die casts Hopefully I'll start doing every wave of the haulers. Uh, fingers crossed on that one that that gets done. And uh, be sure to like this video and leave me a comment. Let, uh, let me know what's going on. Follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. Uh, because I sometimes post, uh, I, well, I post a lot on there. Uh, my hunts, what's going on with the uh, Spin Masters. And you can ask me questions on there and talk to me on there a lot easier than on YouTube. So... Without any further ado, I'll let you go. Uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, it keeps me doing this. And uh, we'll see you next time for Wave 2 of the Spin Master NASCAR Authentics. <laughs>